So I'm sitting down looking for pictures to put into my presentation when I come across Google's suggestion after I typed in polar bears. This isn't surprising though, because these fluffy bears were placed on the endangered species list to get the federal government to create legislation to protect the planet. Not surprisingly though, the image of polar bears dying did not get climate policy passed. Why? Because y'all are heartless. <laughs> y'all are also ignorant. Only 10% of Americans believe in climate change. I lied, that's definitely not true. What is true though, according to a Gallup poll on March 29, is that only 64% of Americans believe that climate change is anthropogenic. Whoa, big word. It means caused by humans. That's like 111.8 million Americans that don't believe in climate change. Here's another statistic. Over 97% of climate scientists agree that global warming trends are extremely likely due to human activities. So why is there such a disparity in statistics? Well, it's because we are creating a platform for climate change deniers to express their views. And this is having devastating consequences for all of us. So today, we will walk through the causes, effects, and solutions of building this pedestal for the ignorant. These issues exist for many reasons, but the two that I believe to be the most important are not effectively challenging climate change deniers and distorting science to fit the political divide. But first, we allow climate change deniers to express their views, and then we don't effectively challenge them. And this happens on large scale and personal levels. The large scale level consists primarily of the media. These are all news outlets that have hosted climate change deniers. And there's an entire article on The Guardian that explains how Fox News is a major driving force behind global warming denial. News outlets welcome climate change deniers onto their shows to seem unbiased and get both sides of the debate. But there is no debate here. And now the facts from scientists are made to appear equal in strength to the opinions of authority figures that have devoted their life to twisting stories any way they need to in order to push their agenda forward. This is like getting told by a doctor that you have a week to live and then going to a gas station attendant for a second opinion. Either way, you're gonna die. And on a personal level, we just aren't good enough at convincing the skeptics. Cause numero dos. The fossil fuel industry is distorting science, creating a political divide. But not as much of a divide as whether or not cereal is a soup. Yeah. Clearly it is, and I am truly ashamed that anyone would think otherwise. This political divide in regard to climate change was clear in the aforementioned Gallup poll. As you can see, 69% of Republicans think the seriousness of global warming is generally exaggerated, while only 4% of Democrats think that. This is because fossil fuel industries buy influence among politicians. The New York Times on July 28, 2018 revealed a Republican congressman once said, all I knew was that Al Gore was for it, and therefore I was against it. This push against climate policy has essentially become a part of the litmus test to determine how good of a Republican you are. And apparently a uh, litmus isn't a wild Christmas party. <laughs> Found that one out the hard way. <laughs> Effects, the spread of fake news and influence on policy. But first, fake news is spreading faster than measles at an anti-vaxxers convention. <laughs> MSNBC on November 26, 2018, hosted a member of Republican think tank a group that receives millions of dollars from oil companies, who was aggressively trying to downplay the severity of climate change. Let's just take a little listen to what she had to say. You guys are going to love this. We need to also recognize that we just had two of the coldest years, the biggest drop in global temperatures that we've had since the 1980s, the biggest in the last hundred years. We don't talk about that because it's not part of the agenda. So it sounds to me like she's trying to say that the last few years were the coldest they've been in a long time. But according to the USA Today, a few days after this was recorded and data from NASA's website, the past four years have been the four warmest years on record. It's just that the temperatures were so high in 2016 that the following two years were bound to be lower in comparison. It's like when you're stoned, but the person next to you is like, <laughs> Really stoned? No one can even tell that you're high. <laughs> That's why I bring my roommate wherever I go. My Jess. <laughs> and no, Mom, I don't actually smoke. And yes, I will take a drug test if you don't believe me. <laughs> Anyways, it's pretty clear why everyday media consumers get confused and perpetuate lies and myths. Next. Influence on policy. When the previously mentioned Republican congressman proposed a much needed bill to save our nation billions of dollars from the damage to be caused by natural disasters, his seat 
was taken. He would suck at musical chairs, am I right? <laughs> this, emphasized <laughs> this emphasizes the real danger Republicans face pushing climate policy and helps us understand why CNN on November 23rd, 2018 said, Trump and his minions are the death eaters of Lord Voldemort. I mean, the loyal servants of fossil fuel companies. This explains why the Trump administration is blatantly ignoring their own climate report. Beyond this, the aforementioned Vox article explains that the GOP remains dead set against any policy that would threaten the profits of fossil fuel companies. Well, Jordan, that's my name by the way, I lost my name tag, <laughs> what can we possibly do to help? Well, since everyone was against climate change because Al Gore was for it, maybe we can convince Al Gore to be a climate change denier and then everyone else will push for policy. We have two more feasible solutions. First, listening with an open mind, and second, counteracting fake news on large scale and personal levels. But first, part of this issue lies within whose opinions we listen to. Listen to everyone, even women. <laughs> Highly educated women that don't have oil companies securing them a platform to speak on news channels are constantly reframed as unqualified to broker information to the public. For example, Dr. Sarah Meyer, a distinguished female scientist, explains that when she contributes to the public, her expertise is dismissed and what she receives is misogyny. People tell her to shut up and back down. But she, as a woman, also experiences these issues and has creative solutions to tackle this vast problem that the federal government has been disregarding. And on the individual level, try to understand what people need to hear before getting angry and telling them what you think they need to hear. I created a little pamphlet that should prepare you for an encounter with a climate change denier with information about what is happening, how we know it's happening, and of course, some cartoons. So please, take one. Because if you don't, then I wasted a lot of time print credits, <laughs> and trees. <laughs> we tend to think skeptics just need to understand the statistics, but facts don't always work in persuading skeptics. Many people need to hear the real effects that climate change is having on their lives. Like, for example, how their taxes will go up immensely when they have to pay for the recovery from natural disasters that are caused by climate change. Perhaps rap music can help. Ice, ice melting. <laughs> We're dying. <laughs> Next, we need to pressure news outlets to counteract the political division. We can follow in the footsteps of CNN, which on December 10, 2018, went as far as to debunk some of the common myths that are spread by politicians and lobbyists on news channels, including their own. Or, if you're not a fan of myth busting, train interviewers to ask the simple question Do you have any evidence to support these claims? I promise it would be hilarious to watch deniers fall apart on live TV. <laughs> or, you know, we could just stop hosting climate change deniers in the first place, and this wouldn't be a problem, just like measles wouldn't be a problem if we vaccinated our kids. Seriously though, we have had the highest number of measles cases since the disease was eliminated in this country. Today, we analyze the causes, effects, and solutions of building a platform for climate change deniers. Because if everyone understood and believed in the real danger that is climate change, policy that is detrimental would not be passed the way it is now. And this may sound crazy to everyone, but maybe we can enact policy that is beneficial to the welfare of the people and the polar bears, because they're still dying. And if we don't make a change, the climate will. I'd like to thank Professor John Stanley for dealing with me the entire year in speech I understand it must be difficult. I'd also like to thank Dr. W for helping me write a biology lab report and then going on to help me make a visually appealing PowerPoint. And finally, my friends and family for coming to support me and helping me decide which jokes I should not use in the call. <laughs> they didn't know about that one. <laughs> Don't forget a pamphlet. Thank you.